There we go. It's nice and flat, so. <sighs> that means I gotta make some phone calls and see if we can pairs out here in the middle of nowhere. Bugging out on the e-bike. It's supposed to be like 107 degrees today, so you know, had a bad idea. I was like, I'm gonna bug out on my e-bike. I've got a CUI bike here, um, thousand watt motor, big old battery. These things are supposed to handle like a hundred miles on it. Um, I don't have that far to go, but I'm also totally experimenting here. I have no idea how this is gonna work. I do have an extra battery right there and I got a backpack that's got drone and batteries and cameras and crap. Basically water and a cell phone in case everything goes horribly sideways. A lot of the thoughts that I've or the feedback that I got from the last video was e-bikes are impractical because you can't recharge them and all this other stuff. And I, I kind of get it, but I don't. Here's why. If you have a city location and you want to bug out to a country location, you need to get there, right? You should be able to stockpile the other stuff you need to get there. And really the e-bike is just your mechanism for navigating grid down situations when roads are impassable and that kind of thing so my hypothesis and part of what i'm gonna, I'm gonna test out on this is have a primary battery with the big big travel duration like this hundred mile one have a secondary so you can double that if you need to take a recharger take a recharger and then if you have something like this 300 amp hour bio no battery and i've got two of those you can leave something like this at your bug out facility with a little Harbor Freight Juniper battery uh, inverter right there. Connect that into your battery for your e-bike and now you just recharge that thing. The other thing is I don't care how small the solar panel is, given enough time it'll eventually recharge the battery. Yeah, you want bigger solar panels because they are going to charge faster. But if your only goal is to get to the bug out location, and then you have a big amount of time that you can use a charged battery with a solar trickle system to recharge it. I think that's the way to go. Let's find out. My legs are on fire for climbing the hill. It says we smoked about half a battery. I hope not. But I just climbed that thing right there. From down at the bottom of that canyon, which 
probably would have killed me on a road bike, but it just kind of buzzed right up on the e-bike. I think the Achilles heel for these e-bikes is capacity. I would love to see a skinny tire, three or four battery, hyper capacity, hot swappable e-bike or recumbent bike. Maybe I'm gonna have to come up with that in the future. But for now, it's a beautiful view. I'm at the top, hopefully some of this downhill will help me recover. Some of that battery will go, it fluctuates a lot. Like it'll go down to a quarter and it'll go up to two thirds. I think that's just depend upon how much pull you're putting on it. So, so far, so good. I figured that'd be a possibility. These are some thin tires, but I don't know what I hit. Can't really see it, but it's, it's nice and flat, so. <sighs> that means I gotta make some phone calls and see if we can do some side of the road repairs out here in the middle of nowhere. Funness. <laughs> go that's what happened pros and cons of these little e-bikes is the tires are good suspension either they're, they're fluffy but just the slightest stuff will blow them out now obviously I just found that big spike in the tire so that's what blew it out and the other con about this is it's almost hard, impossible to replace the tires on the road because you have to disconnect this and you need actual sockets to replace that like it can be done but it's a real pain in the butt especially when you have to disconnect these pieces or those pieces to get the brake off and everything um so i have two of these bikes what i did with the other one is i put a motorcycle tube in and i haven't had issues with, with it so my options are fix this or get the other one what's going on you can't want to mic the seat too but you're good I'm, my wife's gonna bring gonna come pick me up I was gonna say there's not much cell service here. Yeah, no, I, I was able to make a call. Okay, I appreciate it though. Very solid. All right, on the other side of that hill. Go right, Chuck. I appreciate the stop though. Well done, just um, Yeah, I just blew a tire out. I, pulled, I had this little long staple looking thing in it. So it flattened it out real quick. That's too I can maybe put some goo in it and pop it up and go again, but I think that's probably not gonna work. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Is this an e-bike? Yeah, it's a, it's a zippy little e-bike. It's it's fast. Do and the tires not, are inflated. Do they not? All right. Well, so good luck. yeah, thanks for stopping. The kickstand's kind of handy right now because you can just drop it and stick it up right there. It's also a little bit low. I wish it would be higher so it didn't hit stuff. My options are in the future put a motorcycle tire on this, put some goo in it so that we'll fill the holes. Maybe for now, I'll put some goo in it and re-inflate it and see how it works. Um, I've got two of these bikes. I think I want to grab the other bike and continue this trip and see how far we can go. I don't know. Let's see. My wife's going to bring the van over and do a swap for me. So either I can be super stupid and ride the other bike all the way up or I can just call it. So we'll see. While I'm waiting, let's talk about water. It's very hot out today. I 
I think it said it'd be about 107. There is a stream right over here, and I always see people pulling like a gallon of water and carrying it with them. I get that, but there's value in being able to just get the water where you go. What I mean by that is this. I have a bee free K-9 filter that gives me the ability to just put water in this thing. Now, I've already got some water in it. Let me pop my little lid off. Oh, tree. Well, that first bit's hot. So, you always see these straws, and the straws work, but you're sticking your face in a mud puddle and slurping mud right or water right into your mouth. So I'm not a fan of the straws. The problem is, yeah, you can stick your face down there and there with the straw and you can drink water out of it, but now if you want to take water with you, you got to slurp the water up and then spit it into another container and then you're drinking spit water when you move to somewhere else. But I really like this because it's extremely light. It'll roll up into a bag. I can have it and forget that it's there. It's so light. It's called a bee free catodyne filter. And all you do is put your river rotter in the bag. The filter is right here inside the inside and then you drink it. So you show up, scoop it up and go. Don't sell these or anything. I bought this one, but they work great. Bee free catodyne. Don't use those straws. Go get some more water. See if I can get down there. This way, you don't have to bring as much water. But you can just use what's already out there. Yeah, get down. Okay. It's a lot colder. Why? A lot better. And that warm stuff. The moral of this story is make sure that you have inner tubes, tools, and a way to pump your tire up if you're gonna go somewhere long distance. There's what I should have done and there's what I did and they don't know each other. Okay, I can, my bug out location is close to here. We're going 23 miles an hour, it says a quarter of a tank when I, or a quarter of a battery. When I stop, it goes up to about a half a battery and we're still ripping. I basically have gone in the fastest gear with full throttle the whole way. Um, some exception to that rule is if I'm going up hills, I'm pedaling because it'll slow down. And basically if I'm going below about 25 miles an hour, I pedal. Other than that, man, she's still ripping. Good. All right, more driving. durations of time that's constantly filling your reservoir of that. Okay, made it. Uh. Made it. Okay, I got that much battery left. It was dropping down to that lower bar then popping back up. I was worried about not making it, but we did the last climb up the mountains here at the property. And made it. So, things learned so far. Have a backup plan, bring an extra tube, put some goo and motorcycle tubes in these things. 
This is the second bike. It has a motorcycle tube. You see, I've got some pokies in there, probably from Cactus. Um, same battery, second bike, motorcycle tube, goo. Yeah, man, be prepared, not like what I did. So, this tent, man, this thing is held up. This is the second winter and second summer that this has been up here. And it's still kicking, and I'm just leaving it up here. So, there you have it, CY bike. Here's the website for them if you want one. And it rips. It's affordable, not super expensive. Not the most high-end thing on the planet, but it will go some pretty big distances you can book along. For the most part, this, ru this run, I think I've done, I don't know, like 40 miles, two mountain ranges. I mean, more than 40 miles, I'm not sure. It's about 45 to 55 minutes to get here in a car when you're cruising at highway speeds. So I'm gonna have to calculate that one to figure that out. But now, if this was a real e-bike bug out situation, what would I need here? Well, if I have a solar panel system that's up here, even if it's only 200 watts, something small, I could recharge this. Just get a really large battery like that 300 amp hour bio NO battery I have. A couple hundred watts of solar panel, to probably 200 minimum, 800 is closer to better, but you know, use what you can use. And then a charger and an inver inverter. So you can get yourself here on this bike. You can charge it while you're up here. And that will smoke up a large majority of the battery and capacity that you have. But how often are you gonna be in a place like this? How much do you need to use that bike? Now I can pull the battery off and it's kind of heavy like a huffy, but it's still usable without that battery, just like a normal bike. Just about any solar panel given enough time will recharge this bike. Clearly the bigger the panel, the bigger the batteries, the better. But if you have a panel that you leave up here for big durations of time, that's constantly filling your reservoir of batteries, when you get here and you tank that reservoir of batteries, even if it takes a week to recharge the thing, it's gonna recharge itself. That gives you the ability to get over here, the electricity to charge overnight, and the ability to come back. As a quick example, this thing's been up here for a couple years. It's right there monitoring. This is a remote antenna that I've got up in the tree so it can send me text messages. And that's a solar panel sitting right here. I haven't replaced batteries on this since I bought it. And that solar panel has been running for, I think three or four years now. Just keeping everything cooked along all the way through the winter and the summer and I just come up and swap out the batteries if anything shady goes down. There's an antenna over there in the tree and it'll text me on the cell phone system immediately. In fact, when I pull up here, if I had my phone on me, it'd be sending me a message to some weird guys walking by the camera, filming it and taking pictures and stuff. Now, time to swap the battery out. I had to go do that again and get home. Hopefully before it rains. Hey, what's brown and sticky? Stick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We ride for two more hours. Maybe three. Hopefully before the rain gets me. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Give me your comments, questions, concerns. I think e-bikes are valid devices for getting out of Dodge and going to your property. As long as you've tested it, you have enough batteries, you can swap that out. And when you get to your property, you have some sort of system to recharge it. That way you get back. So, tell me your thoughts, questions, concerns. Hopefully that's valuable to you. Leave your comments down below. Thank you. Okay. This is not wise, dude. This is one hand. Okay, for those of you that have stuck around, we're gonna talk really quick.
about a full review of the specs of this bike. I am going to have to give you, let's see what that says right there. 48 volts, 25 amp hour, 54.6 limited charging voltage. That's the size of your battery. It's got a 1000 watt motor. For comparison, the, the Magnum bikes I demoed a while ago had a uh, 500 watt motor on the gray one and the payload had 750. So that motor rips. The bike is about two thirds e-bike, meaning e-motorcycle, and about one third, one third bike. If you add this back seat to it, it's a little more comfortable to pedal with your butt there. It's really, really comfortable to pedal while you're standing up. Really nice to pedal while you're standing. Kind of reminds me of a TW200. And I think that's mainly because I've got a big front suspension, balloony tire, balloony tire, and a, and a back suspension. So it kind of rolls all over it. It's not super comfortable to sit and pedal on. You can, but I'd rather just open the throttle up. You got your throttle right here, one shifter, up and down, seven gears, rear shifter only. You've got your mode button and your speed button. And basically, it's got the same acceleration as in one as it does in five, but the difference is one caps out at like 10 miles an hour, two at like 15, all the way up to five, which will just go as fast as you can, which is between 30 and 35 miles an hour. It's kind of hard to pedal past about 25, so if you want to be a little efficient, you put it in mode three or mode four and you pedal until it gets about 25 miles an hour. And 25 miles an hour for a pedal bike is fairly cooking. 30 to 35 miles an hour for an electronic pushing bike is good as well. So it's got a light. It has a, it has an always on light around the outside of it. It's got this always on light right here that's kind of just good for keeping you from getting whacked by a truck and then it's got that light which is actually surprisingly bright it's the middle of the day so you can't really see it but it's perfect for riding at night it's adjustable detachable works pretty good if you get that second seat it's extra there is a little basket that comes with it doesn't fit really well i made it work my two cents is get the seat use a different way to carry stuff if you need a basket um, it's got brake lights, which are really cool. They turn off and on with your brakes. So you can actually squeeze your brakes in the nighttime and keep people from running into you. Other than that, it's just a little ripper. It is fun to ride. It's fun to stand up and pedal. Any of you X-Gen people know what I mean. Growing up with a BMX bike, it's kind of like riding an electronically charged Huffy. <laughs> okay. I think it's worth purchasing at this price. It's not the most robust bike. It's not super comfortable to pedal, but it's fast. It's efficient. It's got a huge battery and a lot of power. You can put a couple people on it, buzz around town. It is something you can bug out on. You will need to test that, test your distances. You do need to have extra batteries, like I've got my backpack. So, all right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I got another two hours of riding home over those mountains over there, and I think it's gonna rain on me. So it's time to go. You hear it? Sounds like a little jet. Woo!